The following video will cover how to create a task event using the graphical user interface. It is important to note that this is only available for professional versions of ePrime. In previous versions of ePrime, serial and port communication was created primarily using inline script and write port or onset and offset signal commands. ePrime production release now makes creating task events quick and easy. Task events can be thought of in terms of cause and effect, where the event is the cause and the task is the effect. To add a task event, first open either a new experiment or an existing experiment. For the purpose of this video, I have opened here Basic RT. Basic RT is a sample program that comes with any installation of ePrime. Let's say that I want to send a signal, think of this as the effect, to an external device through a serial port every time the participant of my experiment sees a stimulus. This will be the cause. To do this, I will first navigate to the Experiment Object Properties page here. Then click on the Devices tab. I will need to add a serial device to this experiment. To edit the properties of the serial device, like which COM port to write to, click the Edit button. For the sake of this video, all of these default settings are just what I need. Now click OK to accept the changes and close the Experiment Object Properties window. Now I will need to set up my task events. I will start with the signal that is sent when the participant first sees the stimulus. To do this, double click on the stimulus text object and navigate to its properties page. Here you will see a tab along the top of the window called task events. Click this tab. At its default setting, nothing should be here. To add an event, click the Add button. As you can see, I have a lot of different options to choose from. I can add an event during a response from a mouse or keyboard object, during the experiment's offset, or even during a button release independent of any input mask. For this video, I will choose Stimulus.OnsetTime. Now I will have to choose a task. To do this, click here. Since I have only added a serial device to the experiment devices page, I only have the option to choose serial. If I want to, I can choose to add a delay for when the signal is being sent. For example, if I change this to 10, a signal will be sent to the external device 10 milliseconds after the onset time of the stimulus text object. For now, I will leave this at zero. Now I have to change the action. The action is a drop-down box that includes a list of my options for sending data through the serial port. I will choose write long, which will send a long to the external device. There is also the option of choosing write byte, which will send a byte's worth of data to the external device, write string, which will send a translated string data to the external device. Or write integer, which will send an integer to the external device. Now I will choose the source of the data that it will send. Since I've chosen stimulus.onsetTime, my two options for source are timestamp related. I could either send the timestamp of the stimulus.onsetTime, or I could send a compressed version of the timestamp called timestamp micro. I will choose timestamp since I have chosen write long. Now I can choose a data type to send to the external device. Obviously, since I have chosen write long, the only option I have to send is a long, so I will choose that. Setting enabled to no turns off the task event and does not allow the signal that I have set up here to be sent. However, I can place an attribute in this field, allowing the program to only send signals based on criteria that I define. Once I have ensured that these settings are correct, I will press OK and save the settings and close the properties window. It is important to mention that serial port communication is not the only type of communication available for task events. You can also enable parallel port communication, which has an entirely new set of properties and events. Like before, navigate to the Experiment Properties page and click on the Devices tab. Now add a parallel port. Clicking on the Edit button, brings up a list of the parallel port's device properties. A notable property here is that you no longer need to know the port address. 
you can just select its LPT or line print terminal number. Now, going back to the stimulus object properties page and task events, I will add another task event for stimulus offset time. This time, I will add a parallel port to the task devices. As you can see, the actions for this device have changed. Now you can choose Reset Bit, Toggle Bit, Set Bit, and Write Byte actions. The most important thing to remember when selecting any one of these actions is that they are zero based and not one based. Set Bit requires that you specify a zero based bit number and will set that particular bit to high. If it was previously high, it simply remains high. Reset Bit will set a specific bit number to low. If it was previously low, it will remain low. Toggle bit works in a very similar manner. After specifying a zero base bit number, you can then choose to toggle that bit. So, if the bit was high, toggle bit will set it to low. If it was low, toggle bit will set it to high. The write by function is similar in use to the serial port device. As you can see, none of the parameters have changed because of the parallel port. Only the actions have. I have the same option to send timestamp information or custom information, and the data type options remain the same. This concludes the task event how-to video.